Hello again! If you've seen the other video, congratulations for making through 25 minutes summarising the Reba 2019 Innovation Day. About eight hours of great content, so not too surprising that maybe it took 25 minutes to summarise the key themes, uh, but I didn't get to talk about suppliers. Uh, and I very much wanted to just run through some of the people I saw and a few of the things that sort of grabbed me as uh, yeah, pretty cool that I wasn't aware of. So, um, yeah, about uh, oh, 28 uh, stands there, because they're all numbered, uh, using the noggin. Um, yeah, and a real range. So some of them were the big hitters. Willis Towers Watson were there, Capita were there. Um, and then you had the big platform provider, providers. So I saw uh, Benefex were there, Thompson's Online. Personally, uh, I'm quite familiar with them, you know, big names uh, in the industry. So I kind of steered clear uh, of those, felt I had my handle and I tried to get around and see some of the uh, the smaller ones. So, uh, what is it, uh, Hotel, Hotelogical, if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, again, I just saw, this, you know, employee discounts of up to 70% on hotel stays. Is, is that what it says on the tin? You know, I, I have to know more about these people. And um, yeah, essentially it's kind of like it's in that voluntary benefits uh, section so that um, it's access to uh, discount, um, you know, hotel networks. And you had Zizek there as well, uh, you know, with their um, sort of, you know, excellent voluntary benefits um, offering. And with some of the sessions um, that we had earlier, it kind of it was part of giving me a new appreciation for, for some of these uh, things like voluntary benefits. Um, in my other video, I talk about how we've got um, around half of the people who are in poverty are actually in work. And uh, recently met with um, people from organizations where they're kind of service providers. They're delivering contracts uh, for public sector or for care organizations. And actually as a result the majority of their staff are on national living wage because the thing is you need to win a contract you're providing the services and unfortunately cost matters um i mean several years ago i remember a lady from a care organization who was lamenting the fact that they would absolutely love to pay the actual living wage but they have tried to win contracts bidding with the actual living wage as the rate for the people who would be on it and they fail. Essentially, they are more expensive and there are no other costs to cut to make this happen. So where you've got people right down on the national living wage, you know, how can you support them? And actually, it becomes kind of how can you help them with finances? How can you make it go that bit further? Because they can't do salary sacrifice because it would take them below the, the legal minimum. So they sort of lose access to traditional benefits. So suddenly, voluntary benefits, the ability to actually yeah get those discounts make their money just stretch to go that bit further um took a step up importance for me personally so it gave me a new appreciation quite a lot of uh financial uh well-being providers um to be honest i would have said in my sort of mental categorization <coughs> of uh, the types of organization they were actually the most well represented so uh hargreaves lansdowne were there um you had, yeah, Charles Cameron, National Mortgage Advice. The Money and Pension Service were there with uh, their free tools. You had Salary Finance, uh, the Smartly Tools, MyEva, Neighbor, WageStream. So always to sort of, you know, uh, to be in control of your finances. And in some cases, Neighbor, uh, WageStream, ways to kind of access it when you need it. So rather than just being a monthly thing, if you have that sort of crisis in the middle of the month, um, how can you uh, get it? Um, and I'm going to summarize my understanding. I didn't go and look into these ones in detail. I kind of felt I had a decent understanding. But, you know, avoid the, the short term lenders. How can you make sure that you're not getting yourself into a worse situation because you need to go and get a short term loan and then pay that very significant rate on it? Um. So getting into the ones where I did spend a bit more time, um, well-being, unsurprisingly, uh, is, is there. Um, so quite a few sort of well-being providers. Uh, Yoga Warrior, uh, an excellent kind of dramatic name. Um, 
But uh, yeah, kind of yoga tools, um, online uh, sessions, relaxation methods. So, you know, trying to deal with that stress and, uh, you know, to help you relax. Um, one I saw, uh, which sort of grabbed me a bit more personally, was just um, Unmind. Um, so an online app and um, the reason it grabbed me in the session, um, Just Eat for making use of it. And it kind of struck me that I've seen adverts for personal apps uh, that you can pay for that will help you relax, control your breathing. And actually, suddenly this seemed like, oh, OK, this could be a company sponsored tool. Actually, a company could purchase this and then push it out across all their employees and say, look, you have access to this yourself. It's something that you could buy commercially, but now you can get access to yourself. And when I went and chatted, I found out it actually is even more uh, than I was expecting. So they were explaining that you've got a CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy type questioning built into the app so that if you come in and you say you're stressed and um, you know, you're know you in a, a poor mood, it can ask you sort of uh, leading questions about that to try and help you pull out yourself exactly what's driving that and to try and help deal with it. So something that just sort of immediately for me grabbed me and I thought just, yes, in terms of you know trying to help with this agenda, in terms of trying to reach out to people so not just the ones in the office, those remote workers as well, having this kind of app that anyone could access anywhere at any time. Um, yeah, I liked that. That one stood out for me. <clears throat> um, in a kind of slightly financial, slightly uh, well-being kind of space, there was you life. And the reason that they grabbed me in particular is they kind of offer like a, a three in one. So they've got uh, life assurance, they have um, an employee kind of assistance program and sort of well-being um, offering. So these things combined. But it was the fact that they were actually doing something new for me with life assurance. So basically, if an employee dies, money is paid to the company and then that will be passed down to the family. It's a pretty straightforward benefit. Uh, for me, it's absolutely a core benefit that should be there. No one ever wants to use it. And it's the most depressing part of reward when employees just statistically will die um, whilst in employment. And knowing you can provide for the family is just, it's just a no brainer. Please, if you don't offer it at the moment, get it. Um, but the thing that I loved about you life is it's just they weren't just going, here you go, buy it. Um, the app is about trying to make your employees healthier um, and, and throw out the, the selfish aspect. Uh, obviously, uh, if you have an insurance that only pays when people die, um, you know, people don't just die in their early uh, in your years. If you are healthier, you will survive longer. They are less likely to have to pay out and they are taking that financial incentive for themselves to reduce the mortality rate and gamifying it. So with the app, you have the ability to earn points. And uh, if you're doing healthy activities, if you're doing these things on the app, you earn points and points can be prizes and you can buy things. So it's kind of, you know, it's a self-funded carrot and stick. Um, you know, it's just, here you go, um, well, sorry, self-funded carrot, where's the stick? Um, but it's dangling. It's like, look, if you do these things, you'll get healthier. That's great for you. But also, we'll pay you. You know, you can get points. You can be scoring this. And it's just, uh, again, personally, I'd not come across anyone doing that around the life insurance benefit. So, again, stood out, something a bit quirky, a bit different. And, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed hearing about that. Um. Various kind of, you know, uh, obviously when it comes to physical well-being, um, you had uh, people hustle with their um, corporate fitness employee benefit practice, uh, access to 3,000 gyms. It's like, okay, gym network, we, we know about that. Um, we've got, uh, sorry, we've got um, physical uh, well-being, uh, so physical health checks. Um, which I've, I've had before, Virgin Media are introducing them. So, you know, I got weighed, uh, I found out to my mild surprise, I was slightly healthier 
than I was expecting. Uh, but, you know, no excuse to rest on laurels. Um, but yes, Bluecrest uh, grabbed me, or rather uh, one of the Reva ladies, I'm not quite sure who, uh, was uh, very keen to see someone uh, try out their uh, equipment. Because, um, yes, if you take off your shoes and socks, you could stand on this machine and it would give you this uh, pretty nifty little readout of your uh, your kind of um, your overall uh, weight and whatnot. So yes, it told me my weight, my fat percentage, my muscle mass, my uh, hydration level, um, telling me what my ideal body weight is. I've only just noticed that, and that is frighteningly low. I'm not quite sure that is a realistic number for me and my body type, but uh, we can all dream. And yeah, it was a, a fun, but also very insightful addition to the physical check uh, process. So, I mean, the actual uh, sort of physical checks are more like half an hour. Um, you know, it's a, a detailed, you know, back and forth about lifestyle. They ask you some searching questions, but to actually kind of have some immediate tangible results. Uh, so the space of a minute, uh, I had these and that gives a great opening um, to the conversation, a great insight. And if there are regular health checks, so you do another one in a year, you'll have something again, very definite that you can measure your progress on. So um, yeah, nice little bit of innovation. Um, nice to see the sort of technology coming through and updating those physical uh, checks. The um, one provider that kind of caught my eye just as something very different, it was in the um, flexible benefits platform space. And, uh, you know, how can you be different with a flexible benefits platform? You put them on, you create choice, you know, it's just like we know how flexible benefits platforms work. Uh, but it was a company called Avantis and they're there with their product called Flex Genius and the reason it was interesting um, was that they are a technology provider and uh, they explained that actually their technology underpins several other um, flexible benefit platforms that are out there. Uh, and typically those are used by larger consultancies. They go into very large organizations. They're part of a whole consultancy and setup um, approach. But actually with Flex Genius, they're kind of there to offer an alternative. Um, they said not quite by choice, but their clientele tends to be a bit smaller, kind of, um, you know, thousand in the low thousands. But essentially you can just go direct to source and have it your way. And for a comparatively affordable price, uh, we're still talking thousands uh, and indeed, you know, over 10,000 and you can spend you know, more depending on how much what you want done to it. But I really like the idea that um, I work in analogy. It's how I understand the world. Uh, it's like going to a car dealership uh, and asking to buy a car and you can go, OK, there, there's your car. It costs you this much. And these are the customized option, customization options you've got available. And you've got a limited choice. Um, and instead, here's the opportunity to actually go direct to the manufacturer and say, hey, I'd like to buy your car, but I'd really like it this way. And uh, I don't know, I'll assume they're account managers or salespeople and they can always talk a big talk. But they spoke very favorably about just like, look, because we're doing this directly, we can customize it and you can have it your way. You can go beyond the regular uh, customization options and uh, just almost because you're going directly to source, the implication you're getting it cheaper and more affordable. So in terms of the flexible benefit space, um, you know, if I have the opportunity and I'm in anywhere new, uh, yeah, they're definitely an option that I'll want to check out. Uh, and understand how I can work with. So Avantis with Flex Genius, yeah, have a chat. Um, the only uh, provider I'll, I'll finish on, uh, shout out to Enexo Reward Consulting, my old consultancy firm. And um, I was a bit puzzled when I saw them there. What's a consulting firm doing there? I mean, you know, are you selling consulting? Uh, and indeed, it just goes to show my age and how far Inecto has moved on in the four years that I've been there. So not long after I left, they launched uh, PayLab, which complemented the Evaluate system, which is their job evaluation system, and essentially allowed you to put uh, your job descriptions, your evaluation in their system, and a pay benchmark reference. So they're a survey agnostic. You can load in any survey you like. 
Um, and so you could have them all in one place, which sounds basic in a way, but my God is just like, I, I love the concept. Um, the thing is, uh, and, and hopefully this doesn't reflect badly on me, but just you get job descriptions. They tend to be sort of one-offs. You don't, you know, it's just like they get stored on a folder. They get evaluated. The information gets passed back. Maybe you've got a master list of the evaluations, but it's normally separate away from the job descriptions. Then you've got your benchmarking data and your surveys and your sources. They may pull some of the information together, but again, they can be separate to the others. So the idea that you can um, not only have this tool to sort of pull it all together and be in one place, but that you can just have a proper record. So that when someone comes back and says, we've changed this job or we've updated this job, that to your hands, you have the old one. You can immediately go and say, great, this is what we previously referenced and this is what we're doing now. Which reminds me, anecdotally, of the time I got given a job description and told we've updated the job description and literally two things had changed. Uh, one is that the name of the system they were using had changed. That they'd implemented a new system and they changed the name of the system that they were making use of. Uh, and they'd introduced a line that said, may lead projects. And it was very helpful to be able to put the two alongside each other and just ask yourself, this seems frightfully similar, and go, yep. There's literally two points of difference. So that's what they had. They're actually updating it. Um, and the updates seem pretty cool. Uh, so a bit more flexibility for you as a user. Um, they were explaining to me that uh, whilst you can put in your pay benchmarking, your matches, uh, it sounded to me as if actually you needed to kind of do that through an Ecto. Uh, whereas now um, you can take more control of it. You can make it more of a living, breathing tool for you so that if you uh, re-review a job, you can um, update the match yourself. Uh, if you, I don't know if this is a feature of the current or the uh, new version, but actually job description creation, you know, it's right there. You can use your template, you can use their template. You can write job descriptions direct in the tool if you don't upload them. Uh, and the super cool thing is kind of like this new pay review module. So obviously pay review time's coming up. Um, I'm sure they're working very hard to make sure it's available for everyone's April reviews, but you'd have to call and ask them. Um, but yeah, a, a review tool where you can actually do the modeling uh, on your review um, that apparently, you know, you can have the ability to sort of, you know, share access and let other people, you know, do the entries and inputs for their areas. So just sort of expanding generally the usefulness of the tool that you can sort of, you know, you've got that general ongoing, like how do we benchmark our people? How do we evaluate our roles? How do we make sure that we've got this proper permanent record of our job descriptions that we can make reference to at any time and sort of taking it on into its next logical processes, which is how do we use this information to see us through the review process? So really positive to sort of see my, uh, my old consultancy, still a big fan. Uh, continue to evolve uh, and really thrive. So uh, yeah, bit of a plug. Might be a slightly biased source, but uh, yeah, if you think it could be of use, do recommend to check them out. All right, well, again, to my surprise, goodness, I can talk when I get enthused about a topic. Uh, another sort of 20 minute one, but some great suppliers there. And really, as much as anything, my takeaway from the day has just been a reminder of in the sessions where uh, Capita were talking about the fact that a fully optimized digital environment is pretty much here. Yes, you, the tools are available. They are out there and these will be the norm. So if you're not getting them now, you should be planning for when you're gonna get them because to be honest, this will become people's normal experience of the work environment. And if you're not offering these things, if you're still in a very static, fixed environment uh, kind of it's like oh god even paper based or you know it's just all in one place um you know on the internet that's not enough um that these tools exist they are fantastic and yeah investing in them is investing in your people and is being not just future ready but now ready all right cheerio have a good one